All right, here we go. First game of these two with uh, La Liga versus Team uh, Masvi. So we'll go with the Italians here. Italian player playing the Italians, or I'm assuming Italian player. Good civilization for Team Islands, obviously. Italians, cheaper fish boom. And uh, shortcuts towards the um, crucial upgrades for, for the naval armies. Sicilians in the pocket for Meteo here, so a bit of a different draft here than the previous Team Islands uh, games we've seen. Sicilians transport ship 5 plus 5 line of sight and at uh, half cost, but not instant anymore. Uh, still makes for a good landing play potential for uh, Meteo here, we'll see if that was there, that's what they're going for. And to the left side, Byzantines for Mark Knight here. Faster firing, fire galleys, and a fast, cheaper Imperial Age. Always handy on naval maps if you need to make a comeback on the naval uh, area. Now as for um, did I say Team Mosby? I meant La Liga, of course. For Team Mosby, we have Cello in the Vikings pocket. Um, classic pocket sim for Team Islands, long boats hype, and they also claim Portuguese, so uh, in the draft they must have been getting two picks here, I guess, to secure both Vikings and Portuguese. Portuguese, cheaper, warships, uh, faster research of upgrades, isn't it? And uh, yeah, general. Lots of advantages for naval play. You need to knit the organ gun if you want to go for a landing at some point and make a very strong push on land. To the left side, we have Heisen with the Mongols. Potential for a very nice and fast uptimes with the um, faster hunt. Could make for a landing play to be on the annoying side with the Mongols or just uh, mass up galleys and uh, contest the water. Now, since I've introduced the sibs, I'm going to take the liberty of a little bit of a fast forward here. Uh, since the Dark Age won't really have too much aggression going on here. I'm going to keep an eye out for transport ships. It is in the queue for the blue player. And here we go. Let's slow down. Here goes the barracks, landing gets spotted almost immediately by Mark Knight though. This could be a quick stopper, but he'll need help from his uh, teammate scouts here. Otherwise, yeah, here come the quick walls. The barracks will go up. Heisen wants that barracks forward so he can um, pump out some spearmen to accompany the scouts or or archers to uh, to join in here. Uh, very early uptime, or nice and early uptime for the Mongols uh, here, as uh, will uh, help a lot for the Opening aggression. Getting that spearman out is also going to allow to for uh, swift dealing with the starting scouts of the opponent. Here come the here comes the stable, which uh, Zuccolo of course spotted as it starts building here. There's no denying that for La Liquid for the time being, and uh, they will have to resort to some quick walling here to keep the aggression out. Sicilian's player not really walled at all currently. But um, Mark Knight should be able to keep the aggression out here. Looks like there's landing from uh, La Liga as well. Here's the Sicilian scouts and they are tougher to defend against because you basically need your own scouts to hold them off because your spearmen will, will uh, deal less bonus damage, 50% less bonus damage. So um, could be very strong and of course the uh, same goes for the Sicilian's archers. If you go into skirmisher defense against the Sicilian's archers, the skirmishers will deal 50% less bonus damage. Spearman and scouts, one scout going down there, here comes the range for the Mongols as well, scouts and archers, deadly combination since you can't really go into skirmish defense against the archers. So 
you'll have to make both skirmishes and spearmen to hold off against that. Lots of uh, builders getting idled here. That is going to be a kill for uh, Heisen as well. But on the other side, Matthew is uh, going for the donjon rush here. Full on feudal with the Sicilians here. Scouts, poor scouts out and about here. How are they holding up here? Only archers and spears, but they are forward. Not really any land defenses from uh, Team Boss VA, from what I can see here. Just the walls to keep the scouts out, and maybe they're confident that that will be enough. But the donjon is up here for uh, Matthew. And Matthew is, uh, hasn't been mining stones, so that's the one that will be donjon for now. But still, you could make the sergeant. So even if you're landing villagers, Gets killed. Mafia. Yes, Sicilians. The Mafians, as Dennis likes to call them. Uh, so even if, if your landing villagers gets killed, you could in theory still make buildings and units, the sergeants, with the Sicilians from the dungeons. So who's actually getting the better... Engagements here, it's 100 to 96 economy here, wheelbarrow in, but that's for the Vikings. So uh, essentially Team Mass VA is still kind of in the eco lead here. Military wise, La Ligue are ahead though, and maybe we should keep an eye on the naval fighting as well. Where it kind of looks like uh, La Ligue are uh, taking a commanding position. But uh, there are galleys being masked by Weber in the back here as well. And Weber hasn't really been uh, touched by the land aggression of the Sicilians either, so they're in a good spot to contest the water. No sergeants being added here. Uh, Matthew, of course, needs to attend to the aggression at home as well. Has some teammate spearmen helping out here against the Mongol scouts, but then there's the archers, uh, which means that uh, the spearmen defense will be less, uh, less efficient for the orange player. Some small walls here to force scouts to at the very least path inside uh, DC foundations though. Couple of fire guys in the back here from Mark Knight obstructing that Vikings economy but Castlage is on the way which means that we will be seeing long boats in about uh, three minutes from now or two minutes from now. You don't need to research anything for the boats. A fourth dock going up for cello here as well. But the fire guys are getting value for eco units killed by Mark Knight so far. Here comes some of, uh, some of uh, Weber's, actually all of the galleys, back to the hunt. So you should be cleaning up these fires, no problem. So now it's Heisen's turn to take some uh, hits from uh, Matthew's Sicilian scouts here. Villagers draining in here as well. Do we have stone from Matthew for, for dungeons? Nope. Only 125 stone yet. Come the castles, the Sicilians will drop castles at light speed as well. The Sicilians will just build castles and town centers 100% faster. So there's basically no stopping a Sicilian's castle drop if you send enough villagers. It's really getting value here. 7 6 KD for Matthew. I guess that's uh, that might have been uh, builders lost at home to the Mongols' aggression. Team Bosvi ahead here now, though. None of La Lique are in the castle, and especially not the pocket going for the landing aggr aggression here with the Sicilians. Mongols long boats now to enter the field and should uh, eventually make quick work of. Of um, Zuccolos uh, naval investments here, as well as the fish and uh, Byzantine fire galleys on the other side. Naval armies well ahead for a team boss here. Not well ahead, but they have Castlage and uh, ooh, Fletching just now for uh, for Cello, so that hurts, hurts a bit. But Fletching and Bodkin potentially for Cello. Heisen's villagers have 
transport it back home, or maybe he wants to transport over more villages, but uh, Meteo wants to say in that no upgrades on the scout, so they can still be fought off by villagers. 30 villagers killed by Meteo. So, uh, solid, uh, solid landing efforts here. Big fight to the right hand side, Weber is going to sacrifice some galleys here, but the, presumably the Vikings longboats will be joining in eventually as well, and Zuccolo still not in the castle age, so I wouldn't uh, consider these uh, galleys too much of a threat with the longboats numbers now uh, being um, added out of four docks total, and uh, Weber also going to the castle age here with the Portuguese uh, with uh, 20 galleys or more to benefit from the upgrades. Now having dealt with the Mongols landing and the landing villagers and the, the foundations are being walled in so that you can't, uh, if you produce units they will be stuck inside your building. We need to deal with the walls for the units to pop out. A market for the Mongols going to transition economy here to go to the castle age, presumably sell wood, buy food, go castle. And there's the cast stage for Weber as well. 21 galleys to become more galleys with Botkin. Botkin in for the Vikings and the long boats now chasing Byzantine's fire galleys here. Four docks almost for the Byzantines, but this last one easily gets denied by the uh, long boats here. But still, the issue of the Sicilian's landings aggression here. Maybe Cello will need to go into some crossbows or something to deal with this. But the Castle Age is still not in for uh, Meteo here. So, uh, uh, significantly behind the development here. Which cannot be said about Weber here with the 23 now war galleys chasing the um, galleys of Sokolo here, who will be taking huge losses even with Castle Age kicking in any moment. Karin coming in here for the Byzantines. That's an important one for the Fire Galleys, soon to be. Soon to become fire ships, it's going to give them extra pierce armor and they will withstand more uh, longboats fire. 10 longboats production ceased for now for Cello. Probably has to attend to some aggression on land here, but it has a TC on the gold in the back here, now making a siege workshop to get some splatter sh shots in on Meteor's armies. Crossbow is in for the Sicilians, but we have a big fight up to the right here for Weber. And missing the armor here for Weber. Weber doesn't have careening, but Zuccolo does. So the, the, and within somewhat equal numbers here, Zuccolo actually can say a better trade here will need uh, assistance of Cello now to conserve the numbers or take better fights here to the right hand side. Fire ships of the Byzantines also with careening in here, joining in from the left hand side. Uh, not to be spotted by Cello just yet. yet. This could be rough now with only 11 longboats and they seem to be out of position as well. They're all the way over here. They are looking for back docks to snipe fish, but there aren't any. And now the fire ships are going to take out all of the Vikings fish eco potentially, and or at the very least the docks, which will um, obstruct uh, longboat production for uh, for cello here. Team Vosby uh, still in the eco lead here, I would say, but uh, they are falling behind significantly military through. Uh, great engagement from Zuccolo in the uh, on the top and top right side here. A trap maneuver here. Fire ships from one side, galleys on the other. This could mean the end of Weber's naval efforts here and uh, further free up for massive raids on land for Meteo with the Sicilians because uh, they're losing naval ground. It's uh, <laughs> naval ground, naval positioning here. And uh, 
The landing buildings of the civilians also have been dealt with. Weber losing all of the armies here. Only 10 longboats left for uh, for Cello. And where are they now? They are inside the docks, most of them. Battle of Lepanto colorized. Where is Lepanto? Sounds Italian. A little bit of landing efforts of the Vi uh, Mongols again here. Uh, barracks and stables still not uh, walled completely in. But even uh, being behind the economy due to maybe higher idle times of uh, La Liquid here, they are uh, establishing some uh, solid naval control here, which means that uh, once they own the naval area, the other team members of La Liquid could uh, try to contest their land as well, and that might just be the end of Team Masvi. But that's the way it looks right now. Team Masvi is still keeping that eco going, but look at the military situation. 93 to 15 is ridiculous. Siege being added. Are we going to see Sicilian's castle? Since it's only 35 builders for Meteor, it's ridiculous. The only uh, task of Meteor here is keeping um, Team Masvi annoyed on land and busy. Look at the idle TC time. 1 TC, 7 minutes, 15 seconds idle. 34 villagers did have to defend a landing, of course, as well from the Mongols, but uh, is uh, applying some serious aggressive efforts on land here. Longboats. Popped out here, being chased by uh, large, much larger amounts of war galleys here. They don't really stand a chance. There are quite a few docks here, but is there economy for Cello to pump out these units? There is wood and gold, unless the aim here is to go Imperial Age, but I don't see that giving the Vikings, Vikings anything significant here when the naval situation is as is. Purple and red going Imperial Age here as well, which means Galleon will be on the menu. It may be even fast fire ship from the Byzantines that already fire faster than the standard, uh, standard fire ships. No more Mongols presence on land and no re-landing uh, re uh, impossible either as long as uh, uh, La Liquia are controlling the naval areas here. Imperial Age kicks, kicking in, Gilnets coming in for the Italians, Fish Eco as well. More TCs being added on land for Heisen here, so uh, Team Bosby they're hanging in there. They still won't try to get back, but it's going to take the fights of a lifetime to do just that. They need to reclaim the naval positioning somehow and apply some more pressure on land on the enemy side, and the buildings of Heisen aren't going to pump out any more units by the looks of it. Imperial Age for Weber as well. Um, didn't kill a single weak unit, but also only lost seven. So uh, good defense and reactions on land here for the teal player. Uh, Eco of the Sicilian's player also almost non-existent, right? Only 41 builders at the 35 minute mark. So Team Basfi, they still have that eco lead, but they are <laughs> with three military to 104. Granted, a lot of that is naval army, but... How are you going to come back against 100 military when you, when you have none of your own? Crossbow's getting some significant raids in here. Cello has lost almost 50 builders this game. Has still uh, had a good boom going, but 75 builders now. And getting idled. Scrambling up the castle on the hill here, protecting some more stones. We'll be able to get more castles up, but we'll need one of those castles to be on the shoreline so that uh, dock production can get back on track. And look at all of the naval armies covering basically all of the shorelines here. Now it's not going to be easy for uh, Team Mosby to get back on water. 
even a forward castle here from the Byzantines. Trebuchet is popping out, which means that this castle of Heisen could be short-lived. With the Imperial Age in, of course, we could mix in Cannon Gallons as well. Can be three coming here for the Italians. Maybe the Italians player is going to be the one uh, making Cannon Gallions here. Galleons with Razor also ranging far into the land. Another castle drop on the right-hand side. La Ligue, uh, they want their win here. They are not going to going to let this uh, naval domination slip, I don't think. Trab pushing from the hill. Of course, uh, Heisen can uh, still repair here for a little while. But uh, eventually we'll be losing that, uh, that castle to the trebuchets of the Byzantines. Strong land aggression. All three, as mentioned earlier, earlier La Ligue now with uh, full naval domination. They can uh, just uh, push on land with all three players here. They are also not at any danger of being hit at home. Now, the army size, that's the issue here. The Ecos are still surprisingly indifferent here, but that's uh, because of the Sicilians player staying on TC the whole freaking game here. Uh, but uh, uh, with the naval domination that Lalico La has, they are so safe at home. They can extend the economy just as they like and uh, just keep pushing on the enemy later. Crossbows over here being taken out as well. Now with two of La Ligue in the Imperial Age, they could also sling Meteut in the Imperial Age here if they'd like to. There's food and gold from Zuccolo, so you could sling the Imperial Age for Meteut, so Meteut can get to the Sicilian's Arbalest if they want to. Some traps out for Cello here, but the pressure is too much for Team Masvi. La Ligue take the Team Islands game. Let's have a look at the stats and find the very last game to cast for today. Largely positive KD here for the whole La Ligue here. The Meteo just saying that one TC and being plain annoying and it works out. And <laughs> look at that economy with the Mongols not being much better. The landing players. The Mongols, multiple TCs, but always getting harassed by the Sicilians' armies on their homeland. Fastest uptime for the Mongols. Uh, and of course, seeing right through that as a landing play from uh, La Ligue. They uh, didn't quite stop it, but they also defended very nicely to keep the Aggression away. Last game will be Rune Souls, so completely different setup here. We need to set the team names again, but this is team uh, Mas. We was it A? I think it was A. Uh, then Lali. Where? We have uh, La Ligue taking the first game. We need to switch up the colors here a little bit as well for clarity of a uh, vision. So let's give the pocket the purple. stones it is now. Oh, I forgot to change my title. But that is supposed to be the Masvi versus La Ligue. Alright, so Weber here with the pranks. So they secured the maybe most try hard pocket of all. Uh, extremely solid civilization on uh, basically any map because uh, well Frank's maybe not famous for the naval map play but aside from that instant farm upgrades uh, 
Calvary getting plus 20 hit points once you reach the Fuel Age, and uh, also cheaper castles, 25% cheaper castles, so you can claim map control in a variety of ways with the Franks. Britons to the top side here, so both Franks and Britons for Team Boss VA, maybe they were the ones making the second pick here. It's 20% um, faster working ranges for the Britons, team bonus, so the Saracens will also benefit from that same bonus. Cello with the Saracens on the right hand side flank here. For La Ligue, we have Indians in the pocket, good. Counter civilization to the Franks, Imperial Camels especially with the speed to catch up with uh, Frank's cavalry and the uh, PS armor to withstand more arrow shots than uh, than uh, generic cavals will. Also cheaper will just throughout the, throughout the game 5, 10, 15 and 20% discount. To the flanks here we have carriage with the Mayans here. 10, 20, and 30% discount on the archers for the Mayans as we move through the ages. And uh, longer lasting economy as well, including the boars, of course, and berries and everything. So you get more food out of all of your food units, more gold out of the gold, etc. etc. Cello is forward here, nice and early at uh, four and a half minutes, only to sacrifice his starting scout to carry just easy. <laughs> rip cello, rip cello scout. Oh, that's unfortunate. It happens on the very high level as well, you know. Bit of a lapse in attention, and your scout is gone just like that. F for cello scouts. Scout. And finally, Mark Knight to the top side here with the Ethiopians, faster firing archers. So, having Britain's uh, production speed certainly going to benefit uh, Team Mosby big time here. While. Uh, while the flag civilizations for La Ligue will have to settle for generic production speed and uh, rely on uh, damage and good fights to even out the uh, numbers that way. Oh, we have a lame! Mark Knight is out laming Heisensbor. Will he succeed? It is possible to block lanes, but it's also... Uh, Also, uh, wait, why, why are you running back into Heisen space? Oh, flexing the micro skills here to take some <laughs> elevation advantage while keeping the boar in line of sight. This is why I allow, allow laming in in uh, most of my or yeah most of my tournaments because <laughs> you don't uh, generally get a lot of dark age action. So why not just follow up some lames? Uh, Heisen is on point though. Uh, stops the lane, which means that uh, Mark Knight's scout is at an HP disadvantage, even had the green teammate's scout joining in here to make sure that the lane gets stopped. And, uh, yeah. HP advantage for Heisen here, pulling the scout, following the scout all the way to Mark Knight's base, so knowing the location here, and now one builder joining in to scare the knight away, uh, scout away. So that... Mark Knight can keep the scout at uh, half HP and still be able to scout the enemy base. So we've seen lame, uh, lame attempts today on this uh, high level, but no... Ah, one successful lame actually with the eagle scout of um, uh, Team Masvi in the first game. That was Team Masvi A versus Team Masvi B. Weber in the Fuel Age. At 90 pop with the scouts here, we have 21 pop for the Britons, also quite common for the Indians. 3 on gold, going to be straight archers here, probably double ranges for the Britons. While the starting scout of Weber gets a villager kill here on Mark Knight's side, with Mark Knight trying the quick walls but uh, failing to complete them. So, one builder down for Mark Knight, Weber already getting value from the feudal age here. Uh, Indians up at 21 pop here, so uh, better economy going into the into the field late for Indians, but uh, but also a slower uptime, which is not great against the Franks because Franks uh, have more hit points until Bloodlands. So so you want to match at the very least match their uptime, so you don't fall behind in numbers. In addition to being at a, an HP hit points disadvantage. 
Cello with the full walls here, so does not uh, need to worry about any scouts entering uh, entering the base. And the Mayans player carriage also following that up, uh, dropping the double ranges here. Will wall off this section maybe a bit far out here to secure the woodlands and then be nice and safe from scouts aggression as well. One archer aiming for the other here, no fletching in for anyone just yet. Uh, you want the ranges up first for the production and then your blacksmith for the production. Uh, no, for the upgrades, I mean. Oh, another villager almost going down for Mark Knight there, but he saves it. Keeps the blue scout out. Oh, I like how they're mixing in the uh, starting scout of Heisen here to even out the numbers. Uh, or to uh, take the numbers advantage over the purple player here. Scouts, archers, deadly combo here. Team Mosby seem to have their Arabia meta down here against La Liquor, who picked uh, or played Team Islands very well. Military situation almost dead even. I, in fact, you would think that the Britons uh, team with Team Mosby would be ahead in the numbers here with their 20% faster working ranges, but that's actually not the case. They are behind. Uh, in overall numbers, that is, overall numbers. It's also surprising with the earlier uptime of the Franks, so they must have been losing some some uh, units here, meaning La Ligue are taking uh, the better fights, maybe, for now. Zokolo and Mark Knight joining up here now, Ethiopians and Indians that is. Most of the scouts count 7-7, seven to seven, so they're matching numbers here, but uh, Viper is housed. Is he planning that Castle Age can't be just yet? 16 farms. It's going to gold though, so it shouldn't be too far away either. In fact, uh, Cello with the Saracens is up first here, maybe hoping to uh, gain an advantage versus the Mayans here with the crossbow upgrade. I've been completely neglecting this side, but they've been uh, calling each other's full walls and realizing that they could play it a bit more passively here. And whoever gets the cast late first, first is obviously at an advantage with the extra range that uh, Modkin Arrow brings and the fact that uh, Saracens also deal bonus damage against buildings. So they'll break through the Palisade walls or the Bions fairly easily. Zuccolo looking for Zuccolo looking for damage here with scouts will be disappointed here as Weber is about to full wall the base as well. Compact walling, keeping the villagers close so they can uh, seek refuge back at the TC if need be. But the woodlands and gold still nice and safe. Gold income not uh, not optimal, but uh, fair enough here. And cast age should probably be in in not too long here after real barrow which will uh, benefit the farming rate with uh, faster working villagers.
We have a doubling here. Cello is in the cast late and is looking for blood here with that earlier cast late. Mayans all the way up as well, but uh, Anne has the numbers advantage here. But there's still two minutes to go for the cast late and uh, Bodkin now just around the corner. Crossbow just clicked for the Saracens as well. The scouts are in here to soak some archers fire as well. Yes, the numbers are here for carriage. But why aren't they targeting the walls? Oh, the same walls as the scouts. Okay, I guess he wants to take out the production, which uh, also makes sense, but... Uh, wait, is he going to get the range here? Uh, carriage or immediately rebuilding that third range, which was probably in the planning anyway, but uh, going to lose one of them now, which will impact production here for La Ligue. He must be with some uh, serious doubling efforts here. Frank's uh, pocket on the way up here as well. And uh, second stable coming up here, which is a clear indication to Zuccolo that the Frank's player is at the very least on the way up here. Trying to quick repair behind there, but this range is going down to the Saracen's crossbows. Only 19 crossbows total, but they have that bonus damage against buildings. This range is going down, and unless uh, Orange gets some panic repairs in there. That is lucky. That range was very low on the HP, but the uh, Archer Mass is here on point uh, for uh, carriage. The sheer Archer Mass here allows for the numbers to be... Um, well, uh, allows for the range to stay up. However, Cello is getting great trades here against the Vions. Great trades way uh, before Crossbow Bot can kick in and... Uh, uh, carriage not even investing into crossbow bodkin here. Doesn't have the gold for it. Had to commit so much to repairs that the gold income was uh, crippled and also forcing a defensive tower. Great damage done by Cello uh, with the early recast late here with the Saracen. Was, was the uptime again? It was quite early, it was in 1833. Oh, what's going on over here? Heisen is now on uh, Mark Knight's side and is uh, applying some pressure at the Ethiopian's home base here. It looks like Ballistics is in uh, because it's really, really getting getting uh, damage in here. But it's just the Britons with their extra range. Now 8 plus 3 range. Mangonel defense not necessarily an option here. Could snipe some farms with that range as well. Or just uh, diminish the archer numbers of uh, the red player. Having lost five builders, 30 seconds away from the cast stage off his main gold. But uh, now on the other. Oh, that's perfect with the second wave of armies now finding the gold on this side. Oh, tell me you're going to hit the gold. Yeah, he's using the range here, yes. He's outranging these archers by uh, two now, right? Eight to five. No, that's three actually. Three more range until uh, Botkin for, uh, for Mark Knight here. Great engagements by the uh, by the blue player here, Heisen, playing the Britons to perfection here. As uh, Zuccolo now wants to double up with the Mayans here to return the efforts against the Saracens here. The crossbow mass of Cello are on point though, and with the Indians cavalry mainly forward, it's just an invitation to enter the purple base here and get some serious raids in here. Should be no problem whatsoever breaking through here because of the Cyrusons bonus damage against buildings if uh, <laughs> Cello would be so kind as to help here. It's going to be 2 vs 1 on either side here but uh, Zuccolo needs to pull back home to, to defend against this push. This could mean lots of losses for the Indian pocket here. 11 kills from Heisen, amazing raids on the Ethiopian side before the Ethiopians uh, made it to the castle age here. The must be a 89, like 80, 149 to 125. So the eco through the eco kills here, the must be a you are establishing a massive lead. Indians cavalry having extra PSR armor though, so this could be a rough fight for team must be here. Knights against camels, not your best fights in equal upgrades. Forced to pass through TC fire here. Ooh, great recovery from Laliqua here. 
But the Britain's crossbow is now out on the move again, hiding one group up north, one group to the side. Heisen splitting up this already in huge crossbow mass to, uh, to raid at different angles again now with Mark Knight hoping for some uh, some counter counter aggression to the Britain uh, to the Britain side but we'll need to move back home to deal with these raids 20 villagers killed by Heisen is really really uh, getting value from these uh, crossbow masses look at the kill count 36 total so lovely quick clean after it's some great engagement there from uh, from the pocket and um, carriage together now some stray units from the Mayans here trying to get some uh, damage in on uh, Saracens and succeeding to do so six builders killed but there are three town centers now for cello uh, are about to become so cello really out echoing the Mayans here I think it's 58 to 53 nothing too crazy yet but as these three CDC start pumping and the Saracens will be in a Wonderful spot to work on. Now Heisen taking some hits at home, but he has two town centers protecting in core resources here. Armies uh, still fairly intact as well. It's 48 crossbows and counting, so it's uh, and that extra range. It's always brutal to be up against against the Britons. Still keeping those army numbers consistent here for both teams. It's obviously the most important thing here to survive at all to field armies. But uh, the eco situation is escalating big time for Team Mosville. They will be looking at a smoother transition to the Imperial Age. And they are in, at a 50 eco lead. So that is extending through all of the builder kills that they are making here. Great pocket play here, splitting up the armies as need be trying to get some raids in with those are pigs so never mind but uh, you're yeah, finding entry points here will at the very least find this very exposed builder there so that's at least uh, one builder kill for Zuccolo over here first builder kill that Zuccolo gets this game actually may be needed up north here to join in with Mark Knight against the Britain's armies but uh, doesn't really have enough either with the light cap camel mix here easy fight for Mark Knight here trapping the Ethiopians crossbows and uh, Heisen with the Britons here just shredding those Ethiopians numbers it's 49 crossbows now for blue 14 for Ethiopians in the red Good fight on the hill here as well. There, and team must be taking great fights on both sides here now. Third TCB added economy, absolutely out echoing La Liquid big time here. There are more camels out on the field than there are knights, but there are also lots more crossbows from Team Mosby than there are ranged units from La, La Liquid. So, so I'm definitely rooting for Team Mosby for this one. Third TC for Zuccolo just now, whereas the Frank's pocket is already at 4. 80 something to 60 something villagers, massive eco lead from the green pocket. Good raids from Zuccolo here though, so the Saracen's player is going to take a beating, but uh, looking at the overall villager count, it's not going to be any disaster here, so it's still going to be in more military losses for Zuccolo and a fourth TC going up on stone here for Cello as well. Pocket cavalry still at similar upgrades here, but knight crossbow should on paper be better than cavalry crossbow because um, your cavalry units are essentially a meat shield, so so the uh, camels are much more fragile to ranged attack than the knights are. Knights now diving in against the Mayans crossbows here, while uh, cello is trying to focus fire Indians cavalry here. Pocket cavalry numbers again evening out here while uh, Team Boss we are establishing a massive lead now both in eco and military. They are 100 population ahead total.
Defensive tower for Mark Knight. 8 plus 2 range on the tower, so that works against defense against the Britain's 8 range crossbows. Still harassing the gold, they're getting more Wilder kills. Or was it army? I'm not sure. So it's 57. It's almost uh, or more than twice the crossbows for for uh, Heisen here. As uh, Mark Knight now joins in with a group of crossbows down to the south. Very much needed to even out the fights here. It is a better number of army for La Liquia here. But let's see how they can uh, handle this. Having these red crossbows down here means fewer crossbows at home for Mark Knight. Which means Heisen can run in yet again and raid even more villagers of the red player. Still keeping that army mass consistent, but the eco is of huge uh, concern here. Saracens will be going in pillage here once that second building is completed, and that is going to be the monastery here. Placing some houses here for just house purposes, but also give some vision here close to this gold in case any armies decide to camp out over here. All of the armies now beating over here for <laughs> for both teams, and uh, which means that the uh, team Basvi again are ahead here. Last um, attack upgrade, castle attack upgrade coming in for the Knights of Weber here, one that uh, the Campbells of Zuccolo are missing. So um, now even the Campbells will trade better. Uh, now even the Knights will trade better against Camels. Great castle on the hill, for hill here for Cello. Does have that DC on stone and pretty heavy on the stone binding, so this is a vantage point you could pull back to or use to push with trebuchets on the Malians, uh, Mayans side here once you get to the Imperial Age. And that Imperial Age is on the way in one of those TCs. I think there it is, yeah. We also have the Mayans. As Mayans can do with their crazy economy to stabilize and uh, go for the Imperial Age here with a 86 builders economy compared to the Saracens 102. That's actually somewhat, somewhat comparable. Didn't I already cast that? Uh, Zon Zolo? Maybe not. Uh, anyway, uh, only first division today. This is the last one today. No, maybe I didn't cast that one. I did cast one boys that aren't game, but uh, don't remember which one. Another defensive castle here. And just fortifying that base and the Frank's castle going up on this side as well. So many castles for Team Bosby now. They're not going to allow any enemy armies to easily raid them with uh, mobility or with range here 320 villagers to 240 so 80 villagers lead at this point uh, ladik we're actually in the build to lead now but uh, they are lagging behind in the progression as well all of the mods we will be making it to the imperial age here in the within the next minute and uh, that is going to allow for some herbalists here for the ranged players and uh, more importantly trebuchets to deal with defensive castles like this one on the hill from the orange player. Cavalier going to come in for the Franks as well, maybe even chivalry since the castles are already up to really boost that nice production out of the stables. That 40% uh, production boost if you are able to afford chivalry. It's not your first priority though, you won't play Barding and Cavalier of course like uh, Weber is getting here. Heisen stonewalling the north side, maybe starting to prepare a potential trade route here from corner to corner. I don't think the Moss will, will be needing it, looking at the current eco situation, but uh, you never say never. Mark Knight still stuck in the gas stage, one TC has been taking some serious hits from the Britons throughout this game. Yeah, there is chivalry actually, so uh, economy able to afford that for Weber. 40% uh, 
past the production of stables now we see the mines in the imperial age with two tribes here now and the uh, arbalest mass on the healthy side here 30 percent discount on the archers units for the uh, or on the arbalests for the uh, mines here so it's very easy for them to pump out those units it's uh, six rangers producing them uh, not currently but potentially producing them could be that cello will lose the castle here with saracens they have the siege work uh, siege workshop up chemistry is coming in here Bombard cannons could pop out here. You could snipe trebuchets and arbalests with uh, bombard cannons from a distance. Um, surprised not to see the arbalests from the Saracens yet, but uh, looking at the north side now, the Britons' arms are in here. A very forward get out of my game castle popping out here, and the paladin coming in for Weber as well, who is currently not producing cavaliers. But obviously, team boss we know, still know they are ahead. They have one opponent still in the cast age, and uh, with no TC currently for Mark Knight. So, no TC, no idle time. A win win situation. Look at this. Try Go Britons are less able to push on their own against the uh, Ethiopians now. If this castle completes, you'll have trebuchets here, which it will. We'll have trebuchets here from Heisen as well to deal with these castles, and there's not going to be much Mark Knight can do about that of his own. Indians army is joining in here, but they're also much needed on the on other sides of the field here. Imperial Age not yet in even for the Indians, so no camels, no heavy camels. I mean, and no Imperial camel. It's 30 seconds away. Pop cap in the. Imperial uh, Castle Age here for uh, Zuccolo, actually. Could be housed as well. Uh, no, I think it's Pop Cap. Look at the Frank Strebs here, just diving in here now. Going into Pikeman, going to, into Halberdiers here, or at least preparing it for Weber uh, in the event of the Indians player getting to a large mass of Imperial Camels here, which will be a an issue for the Franks, uh, Franks Paladins when the Arvalus numbers aren't too crazy currently. Well, the Britons numbers are crazy, but uh, they are pushing a one verse one up top here. Actually sending all of the arms forward now. Now Heisen with the forward castle here will just be sending the arms reinforcement to the forward castle and use tribes to just demolish what used to be Mark Knight's base over here. And uh, Zuccolo doesn't really have stand any chance against 70 arbalists as home base doesn't have any response to this at all can not uh, rely on any help from mark knight just currently although mark knight is going to the imperial age only one crossbowman for now and while we have 70 arms from the britons One castle is down on the red player's side. The Arbs now still raiding and getting value. 55 builders killed and Heisen only lost 5 builders of our own. Just casually letting these heavy camels in here. That could backfire a bit, but there are paladins raiding the backside of the Mayans base. Gonna lose some serious ground here now on elite skirmisher. Could be gold issues here for the Mayans actually. Yeah, gold only for four gold miners. Castle still stands on the hill, but. Uh, economy is suffering and then it's been suffering for a while for Laliqua here. They're still feeling armies but uh, when you resort to trash units and or skirmishers in a team game like this it's usually an indication that you are in a rough spot. They also don't have any markets or anything out here so they can't uh, can't uh, get any trade gold income. They don't have a safe trade route either so <laughs> not uh, exactly an option here. There goes another Ethiopian's castle. Some stray villagers being sniped over here as well. The castle on the hill is living dangerously for the mines here. Trebs targeting Trebs. Uh, Paladins 
running in as well, and they will just shred the skirmishers and the remaining arbalests here. Since the skirmishers have minimum range, the paladins will just um, go in and abuse that and take him out. Castle still stands, but there's a treb and a uh, bombard cannon to have a say in it, and that's going to be the last hit. No, that's going to be the last hit, <laughs> and down it goes. <laughs> Some Indian stables in the middle here for Zuccolo, sneakily replenishing the now Imperial Camel's numbers here. While Mark Knight uh, or Heisen seems to have a personal agenda against the Ethiopians here. It's just really, really after Mark Knight here. 22 builders, one crossbow man for Mark Knight. Maybe he will at least make it to the Imperial Age, but that might be the last thing happening as well because there's no way back for Laliqua here. They will be going into a 1-1 here for this league match. The trade is also running for Team Mosby here. They're actually trading top corner, not uh, not right-hand side corner, so <laughs> a bit of confusion here. But the trade is running regardless. We could have a look at it. Weber with 20 trade cards already, uh, making it easier to replenish the Paladin numbers. Paladin versus Imperial Camel, never a good trade, but with Arbalists to help out, shouldn't be an issue. Laliqua still fighting here, they have the fighting spirit, but they have uh, Mark Knight uh, basically out of the game still, uh, to the point of defeat here. One out of the two defensive castles of uh, Zuccolo going down here as well, which means that some Frank's Paladins could just uh, dive in here and raid the rest, or maybe just the Arbalest Mass. Look at this production, 16 ranges producing for the Britons. There it is, the GG is called. Ladikwe really wanted the 2 0 here, but they have to settle for a 1 1. And uh, great set it was. Team Islands and Runestones for this, these matchups. Three hundred four to one hundred thirty KD for the Franks Saracens. Well, while up there is a great, great KD ratio of Team Mosby, kept killing armies and extending economy, so they always had the equal lead as well as we can see here. Mark Knight really uh, struggling against the first wave of Britain's crossbows. There, nice archers play by Heisen, splitting up the armies and for maximum value, taking out lots of builders early on, making a comeback almost impossible for the Ethiopians, since the Britons have that faster working archery ranges, team bonus.